Willkommen zurück. Welcome back. Kanal von Chaos. To the channel of Chaos Zone TV. This is day two of the remote Chaos experience. And we have a full schedule for you again. So let's just dive in. We start with a talk. Get your tools offline. Drum gehen, wie so, man sich denn sozusagen so eine Infra we will talk about how you can just build up your infrastructure from the ground up. And so I will welcome Martin. And he always liked to take things apart and put them back together. Und hat damit schon mit dem KC86 and he worked with, uh, started with a KC68 uh, 86 so he will present to you how you can handle this yourself die bühne ist deins wir freuen uns martin the stage is yours looking forward to it ja hallo ähm vielen dank ja hallo thank you very much for the introduction thanks that for me uh, thanks for allowing me to open my toolkit for you. So I want to ask the question, how much cloud is useful? And how much is just for convenience? And how much cloud is too much cloud? If we want to protect our data and save data, but also what our priorities are. So where do we need cloud? Where do we want it? And is it possible or maybe even a good idea to not use any cloud service? So I'm playing around with Arduino a little. I will show you what I do in my free time. As mentioned, I always took things apart. And it was also always about solving simple little problems, and sometimes more than that, with Arduino and others. But that's only supposed to be an example. For all the things you can do yourself. For all those who already know about Arduino and others, hopefully you just feel right at home. But for others, maybe there's new ideas, and I would. I'm looking forward to feedback. Because for me, there's always a lot more to learn and to do. And I really like to play and to discover new things that can be done with little work. And of course, you can always invest more time and energy and do things that many people wouldn't find reasonable. So I'm coming from the software world. And for me, hardware is just another reincarnation of software. So software with other ways. And for me, that's more than enough to, to start with. To make it easier, I made a collection of common mistakes or errors. People who work with hardware will certainly know about them and encounter them on a regular basis. But it's painful to get there on your own. So a lot of things could be easier than I encountered it. So this error collection can maybe help you evade these problems. So please stay critical and yeah, looking forward to feedback about me. Around the 2000s I studied computer science in Dresden and then I got to my current employer. I'm working at a German um, seller, online seller. And that's why Plops, because I'm also working with DevOps, so 
einfach spannend finde von der Organisation. That's just all the things I do. I find it fascinating. Organization, software and then in my free time also hardware. Und in der wie immer knappen Freizeit bin ich dann auf Arduino und Co. gestoßen. And then I discovered Arduino and others. Um, wenn ich nicht in meiner Freizeit dann irgendwelche So, when I'm not working on disassembling things in my free time. Und um, schon im Studium. Well, already in my study time. It said that quasi zerstört. You get the most information about the system when you destroy it with a lot of energy. So I'm not about destroying things, but I'm curious. Another point was data protection. So I want to see how does a, a system work on a most basic level? And what kind of data is necessary and how does it have to be there? So functionality works. So is so in short, isn't there an easier way with less data? And so I arrived with at these projects. I want to talk about these examples to show you and to encourage you to think about easier functionalities, or if you really need the cloud services for these tools. Um, ich And I want to start with the project Secure Chat. I already presented this in August. Uh, smart home theme. The smart home topics will be just briefly introduced. I'm thinking of uh, power sockets that can be turned on and off using Wi-Fi. So first, why? Why do, am I talking about this? Why am I talking about this here? What is a cloud in my context? So, for me, everything, all the services hosted in the World Wide Web are cloud services for me. And everything that I can reach using simple tools nowadays. About hosting. So with hosting, I'm talking about things where I don't have to handle hosting myself. I don't have a server myself. I can just use a service online. And if you have a local server, you have, need to have a proper rights manage management, and you have to see convenience. As a math, uh, well, um, yeah. So on a cloud service, I don't have to care about updates and the like. So access control uh, is also done for me in this case. This hosting itself uh, is happening at a different place. I do. I don't even know where the where the actual server is located. Somewhere in the World Wide Web, maybe in the uh, in the uh, computation center of, of Frankfurt, maybe somewhere else. But this means I'm uh, I can access this from everywhere. I, I can go there. My friends can there, uh, even from the other side of the planet. In addition, this uh, I'm getting another couple of features here. What I'm the things I need are definitely being hosted. The, the protocols I would like to use for that, but also the um, the providers uh, put also put other functions there, other measures there. So, so uh, the service usually takes some kind of data, usually easily very simple structure, um, which they then make available. So, um, quite often you have some some way of uh, of uh, graphical uh, graphical representation, graphical user interfaces, plots, and, and uh, analysis. I wouldn't personally build for myself because I wouldn't really need that. Statistical analysis typically is also available in, in cloud services, um, and this is which is provided in a generic way, and the service basically um, provides an, an improved in connectivity with other protocols. So, um, 
data storage is done in a way für viele tausend Nutzer auch viele that it, that it, that many many thousand users can uh, can use this data in other formats and other ways as i just me just uh, um, would do that so for me the tool just would need one format one single format not all these different that in the cloud cloud typically if you uh, if you want to export data there are lots of protocols lots of endpoints there some some uh, some to use uh, use data in apps on a mobile phone some to use them live in in a, in a smartphone uh, so in a smart home on the other side there there are costs attached to that costs like well maybe direct costs depending on the provider um, for using for using a service or by other or paid by other business customers so other other customers pay for that and uh, I'm getting uh, I have to I'm, I'm getting um, uh, um, advertised in addition i need to uh, create an account i need to log in and cause uh, um, the, the this data need to be need to be attached to my account here so i need to create a login hopefully uh, hopefully anonymously uh, pseudonymously and use having a password so this then means means i am dependent of the api so I'm logged in into that data. Data is going to be exchanged, meaning I'm I'm dependent on this provider. I'm I'm directly dependent on the availability of the service. Some uh, um, reachability. Can I even reach this service? And on a long term, it I'm dependent on the AP, API API. So what's what's going to be? But what's then interesting is the uh, the how the how the, this thing things change over time. So uh, so so uh, so I see cloud services changing all the time. I'm not not saying that every cloud service has has to change, has to be fixed or in any way. But uh, um, we see that they change all the time, and I'm dependent on this on this um, uh, this APIs on this entrance. So any change any, any changes in the company policies of this provider have direct uh, impact on my my own project. So so. Um, so I had this one case where I was using a certain provider, and uh, one uh, one month in, uh, this this provider was acquired by another company, and the service was gone, and so was my project. So there's other questions about access. Do I have the devices uh, that that can connect that that, that one, like smart home uh, like uh, smart smart home plugs, like the uh, Fire TV stick? And at least at that point, I need to trust the provider or the manufacturer what they do, uh, that they handle the data get generated by me, by my devices in a, in a safe and secure way. So that they only, uh, the, these devices only um, do the things they are made for. And especially when I'm talking about the Amazon Fire, Fire Stick, um, Amazon even um, asks you to say to store the to store the um, credentials for my passwords in the cloud, uh, which kind of opens the um, the way for them to use this in, in any other way. So I'm not only depending uh, depending on their service uh, to be available, but I'm also on handing these this kind of information uh, in a in a sensible and safe way. So all of this means I should at least start thinking about what happens with the Wi-Fi password. So I I know that. So um, sorry, I know that uh, there there is a relationship between, for example, the Fritzbox uh, Mac 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 address and the default password, and. So maybe this, uh, uh, maybe even knowing this Wi-Fi password uh, um, or uh, information like that would would be um, would allow this provider to access some data on my Fritzbox. Yeah. So, 
Last but not least, access to access these services. I need to uh, I need to open certain ports. I need to also in the firewall in the router. And in any case, the the background volume, the the background traffic of my own local internet access um, uh, it will increase. This makes it more difficult to secure my, my own network. It makes it dif more difficult to monitor my network. Because, so for example, if if there is nothing, so if I don't have any any uh, uh, device I don't know in my network, and I watch, I monitor my traffic and see that a certain peaks at a certain bound of time, I can uh, I can draw some conclusions from that. And if I have devices that use external cloud services, there's a lot of background noise that does not allow me that to do. So, at least if I have something like smart, 20 different smart home plugs, um, you see the video conference is going uh, slowing down just because of the, the um, additional traffic. So the um, service provider, um, the, the 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 service provider can can secure against that one uh, because they have the financial financial power to do that. But uh, but because of the large size, there's a large uh, attack area for them. It's it's it might be very easy to uh, to uh, to to um, spy out data on the service provider once once uh, any kind of hacker are in. So I need to trust the service advisors and for for that as well. And yeah, you might want to think about that. So the transport layer, it's not certain that all the data that comes from Germany and is worked with in Germany also is routed through Germany only. So sometimes the traffic takes roundabout ways over other networks and that can happen easily. So of course there is a lot of interested parties and a lot of states also to gather data in, Germ in Europe. So it's not certainly not the case that the data is invisible at least metadata has to be seen as public information all those are in my opinion the big achilles heel of these systems so if i have local services what happens then compared to this cloud communication offline Offline communication is, in my opinion, so less is more and less redundancy. So you focus on what's essential. So of course we want to produce less data. So that makes it easier to protect the data, of course, but it also makes it easier to handle the data. I can also show another view as well. We might need less power because everything is local and it doesn't have to be sent somewhere to the US over the World Wide Web or to Frankfurt. Uh, everything stays local. Of course, servers here take power as well. And of course, I am wasting some CPU power but still, I feel like we have an opportunity here to save energy as well. And at the same time, make it easier to protect our data. That isn't to say that you shouldn't have a backup somewhere else, because when your house burns down, everything is gone. But it also means that we should really think about how, what data do I need, when and where. So reducing the attack surface and reducing power usage, for that you need a lot of small chips. But I think we have those and I think we can do a lot of those. But I know that this will be a big point of, uh, point of contention, so I'm looking forward to the discussion. So let's focus on the details now. The graphics that cloud services usually provide, that looks very attractive. Well, I think 
so the graphic user interface i don't think we need it but i know that many beginners do need it and that enables it, it provides easy access and lowers the threshold to join in uh, to also make local work more attractive we might want a nice ui so connectivity is reduced usually to the format you work with yourself so this advantage that you have many different formats and can convert everything which is one of the pillars of cloud usage i don't think that's an advantage at all the format that i usually use locally that so i don't need all those formats so the cloud provider of course needs it but i don't so usually the private user also doesn't need the scalability of a um, commercial cloud i usually generate the same amount of data all the time and i won't suddenly grow 200 more rooms in my in my home so for the business it might be interesting to have scalability but for the end user not really so this is the setup that i start with and i'm thinking okay what can i what can i begin with and the most elementary need that i have is a reduction of data and control about data and passwords and encryption of course and an extreme requirement about localization is also smart cards you can have java applications on the smart card energy is taken from the nfc field around it and of course that can do extreme things so it's very local it is my ad hoc system basically where i can have local applications without needing a cloud service so there are cloud services for key exchange but i don't need it so now i have a choice so i can use one or the other and i think that's the main point that we often have a choice without knowing so this application here was presented at the conference Datenspuren 2021 the application is well documented there so what is it what is it about it's about exchanging keys and a clever usage of keys so, such a smart card is a nice small computer but to exchange the data on a smart card you need a terminal right now i'm doing that with a smartphone app but it's universal so it's a very minimal element so a smartphone has a lot of uh, parts it's not offline but the main functions that i need for a smart card are rather simple and there's a, a lot of uh, devices with this so i need nfc and some display for text so basically it really looks like some like a job for an arduino and of course there are variants of implementation so but um, just using an arduino also improves security in my view so yeah i can focus on a small chip and i am independent of other systems but why should a key be on a smart card why should it be encrypted to just explain the crypto thought behind it so so the idea is that i can get good cryptography if i really have some random random key 
This is the one of the elements, most elemental things in cryptography. I need a really good key. I need key exchange, which needs to be confidential and secure, of key or information, whatever. There, there, there are some, of course, some some public key schemes, but but at some point, someone someone needs to trust someone else. Some device needs needs to trust some other device to to, to initiate this. And the most simple algorithm is using one one keybit. Uh, uh, for uh, one bit of input, which is called the one-time pad, and this one bit is is never going to be used again. So, so I have a rather rather a secure algorithm, which is just doing XOR on uh, for each bit, bit by bit, and and, and then I'm done. I can put this into a machine. But if I do lots of other keys there, um, then then I'm going to have side channels, lots of things happening with the machine. So because if any of this information about there gets leaked into, into the outside, I'm lost again. So I want to have some simple device that cannot communicate to the outside. And this means I have a very simple and clear implementation. So and this was one example here. On the left hand side you see the smart card and and in this and this uh, this uh, this place here you see this it inter it interacts via NFC. We have the Arduino here. And this is just the USB to zero adapter to, uh, um, as uh, as uh, a power supply. And some 3D printed uh, um, a plastic uh, plastic case with a touch screen, so I can easily easily uh, enter text and get uh, decrypted encrypted or decrypted text out. I can just easily build this uh, everywhere on the world. And if I switch this to secure mode, um, so there's some some timing. I, I experienced some timing problems, some energy problems uh, um, on in secure mode, but um, I think that's fixable. So this would be one way I, where I don't need any cloud cloud service. I have some alternative, and I can choose cloud. Als Austauschplatz für Schlüssel, uh, PKP Server oder ähnliches. I can still choose uh, choose uh, whether I, I use the cloud for, uh, to, for the key exchange or some smart card uh, here in this case, and it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, it has, doesn't have to be a card. We also saw some application where someone built this into a a wing for the finger. Some other possibility would be uh, would be music streaming. So, das gilt nicht nur für das Music Streaming für die Erwachsenen, not, not only music streaming for, for, for adults, but especially music streaming, voice streaming for, for kids. So there have been a couple of projects. I'm, uh, so let's have a look at my variant of that one, just with some hardware fork. I just call this Woody, because I, for some reason, I uh, printed this in wood filament here whatever so at the end of the day it it uh, it worked and for the kids it's pretty into intuitive so i don't so my idea is i don't want to have a compact disc i want to have cds because they are uh, they are they can easily be, uh, be scratched and or damaged uh, but i would to have uh, i want to have some some night light as well as an additional function but the main thing is uh, is uh, um is this uh, this uh, uh, playing mp3 for the crits. So there are a couple of solutions there. Many of them are cloud solutions, but uh, I didn't like that. Uh, so I didn't really uh, didn't really see why this needs to be in the cloud here. Um, so and, propri and propriety and unflexible in the sense that it's very difficult to to uh, to um, play your own text, your your own uh, music on that one. So. Haben und es passt halt super gut dazu. Das, das gibt's auch irgendwie nicht. 
Und wenn das Ganze dann noch ganz viel Geld kostet, dann so and you, and also the, usually these things are very very expensive so so um so i was uh, uh, wondering why should i pay that much of money uh, if all these things is is supposed to play some content some music so so i started with this this little thing here so this this uh, this simple uh, chip here uh, um does most of most of things here so so he, I, pl I plug in an SD card here. Uh, it has these two pins here. I can uh, plug in a um, a loudspeaker here, and this uh, little uh, little board, this little chip here, does all the rest of that. Exactly what I I click uh, what I clicked here. Play, stop playing. That can't do much much more than that. But I don't need much more than that actually. So that's why we are started, and if, if you start with that one and then continues and continue, then you come to this weird monster here, uh, which looks pretty weird. So there's some some uh, some open source project called Tornino or Hackaday, some some Hackaday project. Uh, looking at that, I'm going to to provide the links later on. So these two projects. Um, basically build the same kind of thing. I'm taking an Arduino, I'm taking an MP3 player, I'm t taking some NFC and some reader, of course, some buttons, and I either do this uh, <laughs> in some 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 hacky way, or I I I create and add my own uh, my own. Uh, um, uh, board for that. So I, I erected that and then I thought how can I do this as small as possible. So, so if you if you then uh, then uh, uh, and then uh, then um, change a couple of things in the software and improve all these little things there then um, and then, then uh, trying to to uh, to um, um, make all the things smaller smaller there so that one. So we want to save space on the uh, in the program of course and everything needs power as well. So I started reducing things and here you can see the put filament and if we then hook everything together, we have an MP3 player. It still needs external power with a cable. And the LEDs need a lot of power. And so one thing leads to another. With the buttons at the front, we can of course jump forwards and backwards, uh, change loudness. And there's a hardware mode to program the text. So I don't need extra hardware. Everything is in this packet. The speci uh, what's special about it, what I put in the software, is that if you remove the tag, it stops. It sounds trivial, but sometimes working with hardware, the most trivial thing can be quite complex because the library is not meant for that. So it's not meant to discover a removal, but that's a challenge. So now, this now we are leaving beginner territory. Now it's about making your own stuff. So let's go to the next slides, and just to show you what's possible later. But the beginning is that you start doing things local. And then you can work on it on your own and make changes that you want. Another point was saving the energy, of course. So I can turn on and off individual modules. So this is a very simple way of doing it with transistor cascades. So everything can turn itself on and off to save power, because the MP3 module takes a lot of power on its own. Basically, you don't have to do that. If your only goal is to have it offline, you use the MP3 player chip, and that's it. 
But if you want to continue, you might land on something like this. It includes 3D printing and 3D modeling a bit. And then of course there is a diagnosis module as well. And if you are at home at one of these areas, there is so much information online already that you can just go ahead and start. And everything in here is public, you can just have it. So if you say, okay, I know a software, you're almost done already. You just take an MP3 player, you can order just a PCB online, or you can build it yourself, it's not very complicated. Or you just build it already done. And off you go. And then you can just focus on what you are good at. So if you are good at software, you write the software. If you are a hardware guy, maybe you want to build it yourself, but you can choose what you work on. So I want to invite you to join in. But I want to show you two more examples first. So there's a clocking in and clocking out, a time logging um, application. So, so you can check how much time did I spend on this exactly. So I would like to have a statistic about that. So on your job you do have to do that. And at this point I usually have a project and then I have a project step and I want to combine those. I want to know when did I do which step, when did I lock which step and what's the status at one time. And those are the same keywords over and over again and again there are online solutions. But why? Normally, uh, basically I just want to enter data. So I have certain keys project key and job key and my solution is a touch panel and just a line. On the left you have the projects, in the middle you have the topics and then you combine the two and then there is keywords and it just enters into the system. A hard key starts an application, for me it's a fast Excel or Excel and it then enters the data. On the back it looks like this, not very spectacular. So basically it's just two PCBs and there are thousands of instructions for this. And already you have an offline tracking tool. Of course you don't have it to do it, you don't have to do it like this, but it can be also very mobile. So, for example, in the form of dice that you just turn around and it then counts how long does it, um, it lie like this. But basically it's just two systems that I need for this. Maybe it works even better. So I need a sensor that tells me the orientation. And I need a small logic um, unit. So I need I used an ESP32 and a tiny Pico to just make it smaller and fit it in there. And the sensor, and that's it at the end of the day. And these two um, log in at a local FTP server and a very simple FTP. Um, script just uses uh, it uses a very simple script to just write into a file. I don't need a huge service for several hundred euro to manage that. And you can take that further, of course. In the topic smart home, there was this talk at the DS twenty twenty one done by Honky how to hack Wi-Fi power plugs or power sockets. So it, it's not that complex, but with more than 20, it, it can become uh, difficult in one Wi-Fi network. So there is some more work. With all these applications, you've seen there's a lot of chips that you already available with a lot of documentation that you can just use. 
Die sind sehr günstig. And they are quite good at this and they are cheap. Also ich habe verschiedene Interaktionsmöglichkeiten. Ich so habe I have a lot of possibilities of interaction and sensors. Habe ich noch and for the I.O. there is even more options. Ja. Und als Plattform sozusagen. Als yeah, as a platform. Ja, as a calculation machine. I used the Arduino with the Atmega chips. I have the ESP32 and, the, and its friends. And Tinker and all those I can use and I can just use them so the, and there, exchange them. So there are uh, a couple of sources of, of, of errors and mistakes. So let's go, uh, let's just briefly sweep out that one. So there are many possible ways. For example, um, uh, for example, um, uh, problems with the power supply. For example, bad contacts at at, at your breadboard, and um, and time timing problems. But that's a bit too too compli top, too compli uh, um, difficult for that. So so always expect several mistakes, several errors to happen at the same time, and. Start, always start with uh, um, start w w w with wire. Don't start wireless if that's possible, because because that uh, um, that uh, um, the the simpler the, the initial setup is, the easier it is to find the the error there. So so let's let's cut things short here. I'm very happy um, that that uh, for the invitation to talk to you here. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Alles klar. Vielen okay, thank you very much for the talk. And uh, there have been a couple of questions here. So, for example, where can where can we find your slides? Okay, good question. So, I am asking the, the I am asking the. Uh, uh, directors where where, where I uh, can put them, um, but I probably just upload them to my GitHub here. At, uh, but um, direct directions is uh, uh, already uh, uh, said that CCC will be able to uh, to uh, host them. So that's a bit of a critical question: how uh, how things look with the uh, Java smart cards? Whether there are any uh, updates for them even? So, question is, what do you actually want to update there? So, um, of course, you can always change the card, and the the logic is pretty uh, is pretty simple and offline. So, just treat this as a thing like some kind of hardware token. So, I'm I'm. I'm I'm giving this feedback to Stefan Radke, who's uh, um, who's managing this project. So next question is more of a comment, which is that that the activation of uh, cloud services sometimes makes even hardware uh, uh, um, hardware obsolete, like uh, internet radio radio receivers there. Um. Um, Genau. Und dann gibt's hier noch so there's a question here, more related to I don't know. So what's the question? What do you mean with tools? Where so it's the question is where are these offline offline tools? But I, well, the way I understand your talk is that the things you built here is what you consider to be tools but if you want to uh, add something to that okay yeah exactly so i mentioned tools right in the beginning my tools here are this is my combination of my my projects here uh, of uh, built from all these projects here and the tools um, the, the tools, the basic tools here are arduino and co raspberry pi and all these sensors that are out there Yes, exactly. So that's what the question I had uh, coming in via the, uh, the pad here. So thank you very much again for your talk. And so in this channel here, we have a break of 45 minutes. And next talk here is information. What are you looking at? A documentary on privacy. And, and uh, yeah.
sehen wir uns dann 13 Uhr hier. See you again at, at 1300. Have fun, see you then. This was the translation done by uh, B and Isagrim of the talk. Get your tools offline. If you have any feedback uh, about the English translation, please use the hashtag C3Lingo on Twitter and our Mastodon. See you all.